Okay guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're working on the KTM 125SX build. Uh, we're gonna do steering stem races, bearings, and install our triple clamps. So that will give me a place to put my forks once I get them rebuilt, which will probably be the next video. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple process. I do have a video out on how to replace steering stem um, bearings. So, but that was on my uh, 06 YZ450F. and. To be totally honest, the process is the same amongst all bikes. It's just a little bit different on the ceiling side. So uh, nothing nothing crazy to it. I'll show you the way that I like to do it. There's a couple methods, um, but I like to basically take our, your old race, use it to drive in your new races, and uh, go from there. It's a pretty simple process. Anybody can do it. And uh, let's, show you, let's show you the frame and then the triple clamps and um, what I did pertaining to that. All right, now here is our steering. This is our this is the neck of the frame right here where our steering stem um, would be. And if you notice, I left my races in the actual uh, head state here because I wanted to avoid at all costs any powder coating um, surrounding this area and keeping me from driving my races in because these are really, really tight tolerance. So if you're gonna powder coat your frame, just leave these in here, knock them out when you're done and uh, you can't go wrong that way. It works out really, really well. Um, and then uh, here we've got our triple clamps and our new bearings. We've got our cap, our seal cap. Um, this would be the old steering stem nut. Um, and then we've got our new steering stem nut, our anodized orange one, which is gonna look awesome. And then we've got a couple tools that we're gonna work with here. Uh, and this is just to drive out the races. Um, I will show you a couple more tools when we get into the, uh, the whole install process. Um, and I will also put a link down below to all these parts. So if you guys have this exact same bike, you guys can go ahead and pick up these parts. These are, part, these are bike specific, uh, although I think these bearings do cross over for um, quite a few different KTMs and uh, possibly some other bike models. So uh, now the, the, the triple clamps turned out sick. They're gonna look really good black. They taped off the areas, they plugged all the threaded holes. And that, that's what you want in a, in a company that does good powder coating. You want them to know what to tape off and when to do it. And they did such a good job on it. So, all right, without doing any more talking, let's uh, go ahead and work on the um, races here. Let's get them out. Oh, one more thing. If you notice, I no longer have my pipe on there, my FMF pipe. Um, we're going to save that subject for another day. Uh, that's a very, very long um that's gonna be a very long discussion i could probably do a video on it by itself needless to say we will not be using an fmf pipe on this bike anymore uh it's an unfortunate event but it is what it is so let's work on the the task at hand okay now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our punch we're gonna run it up through here that's why you need a really long one and we're just going to drive this race out just on the lip there it shouldn't take a, a whole bunch of effort but um should pop out fairly, fairly easy, unless it's rusted in there, then that's a bad day. Okay, and on the bottom one, I'm just gonna do the exact same. Okay, we've got our old races out here. We're just gonna set them aside. And we're gonna open up our all balls kit. Now, um, on my 450, uh, this one, it came, whoa. That was the neighbors. Um, on my 450, it came with two separate part number bearings um, for the top and the bottom. This one is the same for both top and bottom. So that makes life really easy. This is our uh, seal that goes inside of our seal cap here. And then, dip. This goes underneath, actually I'm not sure if this goes to this, I'll have to double check that. Um, and then we've got two different options for our um, bottom seals. So we just have to pick the correct one for our application and uh, we'll decide as we go here. So you have, to, you have to understand something about these all balls kit. They usually are universal for a couple different bikes, the same part number for a couple different bikes. So it's going to come with different um, different uh, seal rings and uh, 
um, possibly uh, bottom seal caps. So just keep that in mind and uh, cross-reference, double-check which part numbers need to go um, with your bike. And we will talk about that here in just a minute. Okay, we're going to open these up here and uh, take them apart. And what is that plastic? Oh, okay, so that keeps our bearings separate from our race. So as you guys can see, these are not lubricated at all. So we are going to have to pack these bearings with grease. Um, and that's just... Even if they were pre-lubricated, I would, I would, uh, I would still pack them myself because never is it, is it usually enough. So, um, good example is on my Yamaha, the stock bearings, um, wore out like very, very prematurely just because they were not greased from the factory and all balls doesn't really grease their bearing. Well, they don't grease their bearings, um, uh, when they manufacture them. So we have to pack them with, with grease. Um, uh. Either way, we're going to work on installing the races. So what we're going to do to install our races, we're going to take our old race and we're going to use that as the driving, as I guess like the driver for the new race. And we're going to use this flat surface here and use our hammer and just tap it in. Makes it super easy, super simple. Otherwise, what we could do our, uh, um, before we actually do that, I like to put a little WD-40 inside of my um, steering head just to kind of lube up that area between the actual race and the uh, the frame. But anyway, the other method to drive these in is with a seal driver. So I will put a link below for those tools. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the um, old race to install these. So let's do that right now. Pretty simple process. Just put it on top, hammer it in. Same thing on the bottom. Get it nice and flush and uh, can't go wrong. We got the uh, races installed. A little bit of a pain in the butt, being that I'm on this stand and it's all wobbly, but we got it done. Um, bottom one, one actually went in easier than the top one, um, but they both slid in um, fairly well. So uh, yeah, now we're gonna pack our bearings. Okay now, for those of you who have never packed bearings before, I'm just using the Maxima waterproof grease. Uh, love this stuff, I use it on everything. Um, what we're going to do is take this good glove off. Holy cow, I just about made a big mistake. And you want to have some rubber gloves on. Now, for those of you that loved eating glue when you were kids and playing with the arts and crafts stuff, you're going to love this part because this is where we get messy. I'm just going to take a little bit of grease, or quite a lot of grease, actually. Put it in my palm. And if you've ever done this before, all you're doing is rolling the grease into um, the bearings okay you're just pressing the grease into the bearing and you really want to fill every little crack and crevice that you possibly can alrighty guys the next thing we're gonna do is install our uh, bearing onto the bottom of our um, steering stem here on our lower triple clamp and this is the sill retainer that we have there's two of them that come with the kit, and you're going to use the uh, the one with the larger um, uh, metal ring, I guess you want to call it. And you're just going to slip this over the top, and it rests right down there on the bottom. And then we'll put one of the bearings, since they are the same bearing, we're going to just take one and slide it over our clamp. And then as far down as it will go before it bottoms out. 
At this point, we're going to use our little homemade seal driver or uh, bearing driver, and we're going to drive that thing down until it is completely as, as far down as it'll possibly go, and that will be driven home on that. It's that simple. So let me show you my little homemade uh, bearing driver, and then we'll uh, knock this baby on. Okie dokie. So what we're working with here is I've, I've got these parts at uh, Lowe's, so you guys can go pick them up if you want. Um, but basically what we have is we've got a one inch um, uh, conduit collar right here that connects your one inch um, electrical conduit. And then here I've got a piece of, I think it's inch and a quarter I want to say, I can't remember, but um, if it's right over the steering stem perfectly, but does not work as far as driving the bearing down, it, it, it sits on the outside race, we don't want that. So that's why I have this, this slides over and then makes contact perfectly with the inside of the race and I'm able to take this and pound on it and we can drive it down in the bottom. So I think it was like a whole like 10 bucks for these two parts and it's way cheaper than the alternative which is basically buying a specialized bearing driver or finding a piece of pipe with the perfect inner diameter. Um, it's really hard to do so and especially some of these bearings are different sizes so I mean you kind of have to um, adjust to each bearing um, type but anyway this is what I use this is what has worked for me and this just happens to be basically the same size bearing as my 450 took so this kit is gonna work out perfect uh, so let me get this to a spot where I can drive on it I don't want to hit on this bench I need a more solid surface like the ground and we'll go ahead and drive that thing down Alright guys, that worked like a charm, like it always does, so we're going to go ahead and slide our triple clamp up, get it seated up in there, we're going to take our bearing, place it right over our shaft there, push it down into the race, and at this point it'll hold itself in there, um, let me clean up my fingers, and there is a there is a large o-ring that fits right over the outside of this steering head and it's got a tapered side the flat side goes down the tapered side goes up so if that makes sense what I'm saying there and um, it just fits right around the edge there now with the powder coating it adds a kind of a layer to it um, but I'm not really too worried about it um, the tighter the better on that honestly it's just a water seal so I'm perfectly fine with that and I'm just going to grease this outer lip just to help with water and that should be good enough there okay now we've got our cap after we put that outer ring on and uh, greased it all up we're just going to put that on top like so and then this bike did not have an o-ring here the newer KTM's do um, but I don't it's not going to compensate for the distance that we have here so we're just going to go ahead and put that on like that now for our bling, and I am excited for this. We've got our new uh, steering stem bolt, and that just goes on just like so. And that pretty much wraps up our install of our bearings. Now, uh, adjustment wise, I'm gonna have to put the forks in here to get my adjustment set up correctly and I will show you how to do that right now. All right, so I got my um, forks in, which I have not rebuilt yet, into my clamps, and this is just to kind of get a, a baseline adjustment made. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put my triple clamp bolts in on the top. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because what we are trying to figure out and set up here is we need to get this uh, bolt in right here on the top clamp um, tightened down to spec after we've got our tension, our steering tension adjusted. Um, 
<clears throat> now, in order to adjust our steering tension correctly, what we need to do is clamp our triple clamps in, or clamp our forks in right here, so that this is a fixed object. Our forks and our top clamp are a fixed object. Then we can turn this nut, or this bolt, and what it'll do is it'll suck the bottom clamp up as we tighten our steering tension. At that point, we can go ahead, torque these down, and then put our, our uh, clamp bolt in right here, and torque it to spec, and then all of this is one unit. It's all, it's all jiving together. What you don't want to do is have your bottom clamps and your top clamps fighting each other. So, um, like I said, we'll put these bolts in really fast, and then we'll just, we'll just put these in lightly. We will adjust our tension on our steering so this isn't just flopping around, which it's actually pretty snug right now where we've got it. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll torque everything down. That will be how you adjust it. Now, now for you guys that are just doing the steering stem bearings yourself, um, by themselves, those, uh, you'll have your front wheel on. Um, you'll want to put your front wheel on at this point, your handlebars, everything like that, and get yourself the entire weight of the front end so that you can swing it back and forth and see where your tension is. Like I said, this is just a baseline setup right now. This is not finished adjusted, but I'm just gonna show you guys quickly how to do that so that you're aware. Okay, now that we've got these bolts um, tight, they're not torque to spec, but they're tight enough that they're gonna hold the bars. I can go ahead, wiggle this back and forth, and I should be able to just take this nut, loosen it up, and you can see how much looser everything is now and um, that's kind of where we want it right now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this nut, I'm gonna tighten it down until I get my correct steering tightness, which basically what that is, is with your handlebars, front wheel, everything mounted, you wanna be able to just tap the bars, well, not necessarily tap the bars, but actually give the bars a little bit of a shove and then your wheel fall over all the way. So when the bike is on the stand and you give the bars a little bit of a bump, it slowly starts to fall over. It's not just loose and flopping around. Um, right now, without the front wheel on, without the bars, everything like that, I can't really adjust that. So what I'm gonna do is just set this semi-tight right now. And actually, I'm gonna go a little bit tighter than that. And I like to do this when I do my steering stem bearings. But what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna put a rag around this because I'm a baby and don't want to scratch up my brand new thing but um, what I like to do is actually I like to tighten this down just a little bit more than normal and then loosen it back up and that gives my bearings a chance to just kind of seat home so like that that's pretty snug okay that's pretty dang tight now I'll just back it off until it's all the way loose which would be right there and now I know that my bearings are um, seated where they need to be and then I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this up, if I can get it just a little bit, just snug, and we'll roll with that. Now, the thing about changing steering stand bearings and doing this adjustment is you're gonna have to fix it over time. As these kind of settle in and the grease disperses, this will loosen up just a little bit. So don't be afraid to go ahead and, and readjust this again because more than likely your steering is gonna get loose. Um, it's just like anything else, it's kinda gotta settle in its home and, uh, and then you'll be good to go. And last but not least, once I get it where I want it, which is right now um, where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and take my um, clamp bolt and just tighten this thing up. And I don't know torque spec right now off the top of my head, so look that up for your bike and just snug this thing up. And now we are good to go. This is all set up. All right, guys, that wraps up another video. We're one step closer to getting the bike build done. As I've said before, I will link down below the parts and the tools that I use so you guys can get a hold of them. And if you have any questions, please put a comment below. Um, I love the conversation. I love the interaction with you guys. And uh, yeah, if you haven't, please subscribe, give me a like, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.